Mustard Knuckle. Hello everybody, Mustard Knuckle back again, heading out in the Panther F. F for final, I guess. This was the last Panther variant that was intended to be made, even though they got to G. For whatever reason, they went out of order. F, this was it. Uh, and it didn't, they didn't get far with it. Well, they got kind of far, I guess. They, they did some stuff. Pretty interesting, though. It, for it to be as similar as it is to the Panther G and the other Panthers, um, there's a lot of differences with the F, and it's all in the turret. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk gameplay, history, and uh, any tips that come up while we're playing such as get behind somebody and let them take the shots while you shoot somebody else. Ah, oh, I suck at killing tigers. I cannot kill a tiger tank. Here. Uh, well, I got transmission. All right, well, transmission. I, I know where to aim. I just can't ever hit it. I cannot hit that plate. I'm above, above. I mean, I hit it right in between. Anyway, whatever. So... With this panther. Oh, nice. The main thing was they wanted a smaller, more compact, more efficient turret uh, to put on the panther. They, they wanted it to be the same weight, but they wanted less frontal area. They wanted a smaller or non mantlet, maybe even. Um, it just wanted to be a smaller frontal area. The other one had trouble. I'm just going to keep shooting. The other one had trouble with um, the shot trap situation where on the bottom of the turret it would angle that round down and it would go right into uh, the top of the hole and into the crew compartment. So they wanted to eliminate that, which mission accomplished. They did this, they had a kind of a competition out in a couple different designs. The first design that came out was a good design. Uh, but for some reason, wow, I love this gun uh, and this round. Uh, for some reason, it was rejected by the military. Nobody really knows why, I guess. I don't know if it was a personal thing or what the deal might have been. Um, if you ever wonder if you can shoot through a house, just try it. It's worth a shot, and it might go through, and you might be able to get them. Which worked, but then he got me. Um, so the Panther F, you can see this, see the front of it there. It's a lot. It's not as wide as the other Panther turrets. It's got less frontal area. That was the idea. They also wanted to be the same weight, like I mentioned, as the other turrets. Well, this one, Daimler, I think Daimler Benz uh, company, Mercedes Benz, basically, uh, designed this, and it ended up being slightly lighter. Oh boy, I'm in a bad spot down there. Ended up being slightly lighter, uh, a little smaller inside, but it had to have room for this new um, scope that they were going to use, uh, which was going to be a big deal, and that was in development, so they had to be able to use it with that. And they, then they had to figure out a way to get that cannon, that KWK-42, they had to figure out a way to get that cannon to fit in there, but we can shoot this. Shoot it. Okay, well, hey. We can come down from the top on that. I know we can do that. Um, so they wanted to figure out how to get that uh, cannon in there. So the KWK, that 44, the big deal with that is that it's basically the same cannon, just a smaller size. Sort of like how in the M24, they made the 75 millimeter cannon, which is essentially the same as the Sherman and everything. They made it small. Well, look at my pieces going flying. Um, they made it small enough to fit in the turret for the M24. So that was a little bit of an advancement. Uh, and they had to put a different, like, uh, well, they took the muzzle brake off, and then they put some kind of a system in there that could absorb the recoil, which. I read, this is mind-blowing, this thing, when you fire, it has, I think it was 18 tons of force going backwards, you know, for the recoil to absorb, but I guess the recoil is the 18 tons of force 
And that 18 tons of force has to be absorbed somewhere within that turret, which is crazy. Uh, it's 32, 36,000 pounds, boom, pushing on that that has to be absorbed within that small area, which is mind blowing uh, that they had the materials and they could figure that out back then. Incredible. Um, so that is one of the other advancements. Now, the scope was going to be a big deal. It was going to be a 15 times scope with some wide field of view. I don't know how those numbers all work. Uh, it's going to be like a, I cannot remember what the number was, but it's going to be a pretty wide field of view, I think. Uh, but the main thing was you're going to be able to look in really close. During testing, they were able, with that gun and that scope, to put, I think it was 10 shots within within a very tight radius. I feel like it was half a meter, but I don't think that's really possible. Maybe it was five, whatever. Either way, with that combination and an accurate gun like this one, they could, you know, like I dove. If he bombs from up here, those bombs will explode as soon as he hits the ground. I was hoping he wouldn't do that. Anyway, uh, so the scope-gun combination is super important. And that's one of the things that allowed the United States to do so well. It wasn't that they necessarily had the best of everything. Um, they had the right tools in the right places, and that's what this was going to achieve, is they were actually going to combine a good gun with a good scope on a good vehicle. And now you got everything, you got the whole package. Uh, now, it never actually happened, because as this was going into service in 45, or going into production in 45, it just, supplies were short, nothing happened. They slapped this turret on a couple G model uh, Panthers, um, but there were never any actual F models that saw service. This would have been a very advanced tank. You know, these Panthers were easier to produce than a Tiger. They were more, in some ways, more capable than a Tiger. Uh, and this game is over. But that's the F model. Six kills, two assists. A lot of similarities to a regular Panther. Uh, the advancements are in the turret. That scope never actually got made. They made a couple prototypes and stuff like that, but it never got made. Now, had that gotten made, now think about like the Norden bombsite on the bombers, how that made them more precise, how the scopes on the tanks were more advanced earlier on than the Germans had. Uh, things like that, those small things, scopes, you know, tools, uh, uh, radar uh, guidance type systems early on, uh, like the computers that they used for the anti-aircraft guns in Germany, they had manual computers, as far as I know, I think they were manual, but they used those to compute where to fire, and that's why that flak got so accurate. It wasn't necessarily the gun itself, but it was the tool attached to it, so... Uh, like we talked about in videos before, it's interesting, it's not just the tank, it's the tools and the equipment that are used along with it, and that's where the F was going to go, and that's where the F was going to be a big deal. So we're kind of, maybe a little lucky it didn't get farther along than it did earlier in the war. So, that's it guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, about 65% of you guys that watch these videos aren't subscribed, so if you subscribe, you'll get one video on Tuesday, that is a three minute clinic and you'll get another one on Wednesday which will be a video just like this with gameplay history and tips that is all good luck have fun we'll see you in the next one